Greetings everyone and welcome back to Tier No playing as Ust Sisolovsk. So last time we had a little bit of a coup and now we must do another focus in which we say Komi belongs to the true passion passionarists. Rally brothers, rally to the flag of Eurasia. This is for something greater than a dead empire or a fallen union. This is for the future, for the ultimate manifestation of the super ethnos, or ethnos. Drive the enemy from our lands and raise a high the black flag of Eurasia. More political power increases influence of the Komi right by a large amount. Increases influence of Gumilev and more ultra-nationalism. Cool. And we saw this, Shasnir Internationaya Street. If you'd like to read, it, read about that again, go right ahead. But, uh, they're okay. Uh, I guess we could read that. Despite the fall of the government, the Republican army has refused to surrender. We read that one yesterday, so I'm not going to read it. So, uh, yeah. This one, they were forced to return to Siktiv Kyar, and apparently their soldiers fa failed to eliminate the rebels that attacked them. We need to send a more prepared force to snuff out this holdout, and we will need to discuss the Republican problem further. We have five days with that, but we have this almost done as well, so. Cool. Awesome. So, how does that affect our legitimacy, then? Minus 0.25 every day? Cool. Because that one will raise our... Uh, Increase our decay for legitimacy as well. Central Eurasian pr Provisional Authority. That sounds kind of cool. Ooh, I'm not sure how much more we really need to spend with... Raising legitimacy. Could buy support equipment. But I think we're doing okay on that stuff. Someone has defeated the Bogi Smerti in the war. Ooh! The Red Star United Army. Ooh. That's, yeah, you don't have any content, but that looks really cool. Alright, so when do we get a new focus tree? Point 0.5 and now point point 0.45.5 Well, we could get more stability. For 500 manpower? That's not bad. <clears throat> not bad at all. Yeah, we have a moderate amount of legitimacy, so there you go. The state of the nation. With Ust Sisolsk Firmly in our grasp, another Herculean task must be, must be performed, balancing the desires of the various rightist factions in our statelet. The most current influential leader of the front is too close to call. Passionarist, reformist, monarchist is very low, and ordo socialist is also very, very low. But, ooh, now here we have, we can go down and try to beeline to get Taboritsky. But I'm thinking we, ch we could do that and do the war with him, but... We probably need to go and try to secure Western Russia as fast as possible. Because you never know who might secure stuff, and that could end up being very good or bad for us to state secure. With the end of the weak republic and the instatement of our new order under the combined banner of Passionary, the time is coming to begin the reclamation of Western Russia, the consolidation of Usislavsk under our new order, thus will begin immediately until we are capable of shattering any enemy that dares move against us, be they internal or external. Our foes are many, but our people are strong, and if all else fails, the arsenals below Siftikiev Siktiv car can always be pressed in a service for the true Russian state. We get more stability, which is even better. But obviously, we got to strengthen the influence here. But before we do that, is there anything we could do? with scavenging for loot. I do want to get more stability, but we're already getting some more political instability. Oh, that's already done, so we don't need to see that. Cool. So I guess just, you know, strengthen the monarchists. Oh, and we lost probably some of our leaders as well. Ooh, he's good at with infantry, level 3 attack as well. Politically connected. I'm really not about that, even though he's got more attack, but not really. He says he's got more attack, but he really doesn't have that much more attack. Gleb Sushinkov. Cool. Urban Assault Specialist, Skilled Staffer, Infantry Leader. Don't mind if we do. He's going to have to be on the offensive, and then you are going to be on what? The offensive. Very strong on the offensive here. Very, very strong. I well, hope you guys are having a great day. We've got a couple comms to go through. Ooh, Vyatka. Order of St. George. If we can go to or the Order of St. George, you just kind of have to. Uh, let's see. One of the comments from yesterday is saying that someone tried to play as Taborski himself. However, it didn't go very well when a certain shrimp boat had a certain accident. So, <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen with us. But, you, you never know. Let's go ahead and do secure reliable infrastructure because we need to get those factories and infrastructure quickly. One could say that the Republic made a strong effort to deter the bombers and repair the roads that they damaged. One could also be entirely wrong. The state of the infrastructure throughout the Ust Sislosk is utterly dismal, while with numerous trade routes and valuable paved roads completely ignored by the old government in favor of investing more money into government corruption, failed will for programs, and grandiose, unworkable projects. We must rectify the situation at once, repairing old infrastructure and constructing new roads to move goods faster, and allow our soldiers to redeploy more effectively. Very good. Ah, the remnants of opposition. 
After a chaotic period of violence, our faction has secured control over the Republic of Komi and for now remains safe from any kind of coup attempt. However, that is not to say our position is stable. The lingering remnants of our past political rivals still remain in our country and could potentially cause issues if they are left to their devices. We have no choice but to take preemptive action. We must find these dissenters before they can cause serious damage for efforts to stabilize the situation. The Secretary of Forces, or Security Forces, stand ready to conduct a search on key targets from several opposing factions suspected to have a presence in the country. Their base and power will wither away without a strong leader at the reins, so surgical strikes targeting the head of the dissenting groups is necessary. Once these targets are found, we have a variety of options available for dealing with them. Time is of the essence, however, for it is very possible some may try to flee the country before we have the chance to catch up with them. Let's get to work. So we're going to find these guys and get rid of them. Change security procedures, huh? We will attempt to arrest and imprison the opposition leaders. I'm not sure what happens if you do that, because you can change it up. Let's go ahead and try to do Suslov. Why not? We got a little bit of political power. We can try that. And if we're successful, we do get more political power in the end, too, so... And I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm in these cold, cold winter months. Happy 1964, my friends. Hope you're having a good year. Oh, they actually have two divisions now. It won't be enough to stop our six, but... They actually have two divisions. Go figure. Hey, and we get more political power too. Great. Just a step for this. And new workers, agricultural methods, research facilities. Everything's coming on very, very nicely here. 75.5, 74, not bad. Agricultural mechanization. Don't mind if we do, even that, though that does raise our stability too. Very cool. Where they're going, they're not going to need it. Oh boy. Oh no, Samaz already started. Oh boy. That is not going to be good. I'm probably going to have to deploy this division early because we just don't have enough equipment. Artillery, support equipment. How are we making this stuff? We're doing okay here. We need more rubber and tungsten. Making some basic IFEs. We only have five basic anti tank equipment. Mm. Support equipment, of course, not looking good. Ooh, Monarch's influence is low. Classified opposition data. So, activity report Suslav Mikhail Andreevich. Subject's whereabouts are unknown, and since the establishment of this new government, intelligence organizations have been unable to obtain any leads whatsoever on subject's whereabouts, and needs to be considered at large. No location has been ruled out, and it's not impossible that he may have simply remained in sick car or even fled Komi entirely. Analysis. Sosov is extremely dangerous, or exceptionally dangerous, and likely will still exercise his extensive power over Communist Party remnants. It is very likely that he possesses a senior leadership role amongst leftist resistance elements, and its liquidation must be considered an extremely high priority for our administration. Although Sosov himself possesses no military training, he is an extremely shrewd political orator, and possesses a continued risk to a government as long as he remains alive and out of our hands. Rege report concludes. Launch an investigation against him? We can try it. Sounds kind of fun. We have eight factories. Hey, look at that. Eight factories. Even though we could use more. Another military one, which would be good, so we can get some support equipment as well. And after the support equipment, we're going to grab one. we got plenty of guns, of course. Yes. Do we have enough? Well, we need trucks, but we're kind of okay without that right now. we got a few early fighters, too. Not bad. We definitely need more of this, though. Cool. Unearth the arsenals. Throughout our lands, there lies vast arsenals of weaponry that have been buried in bunkers to protect them from German bombers. The arsenal beneath Siktivkar and its chemical stockpiles is the greatest example of this, but there exist many other such stockpiles. We must unearth these caches immediately and arm our forces with their contents. With the contents. A well-armed force is critical for the expansion of our state as the impending reclamation of Russia. We actually get some support equipment and... Oh, yes, we get anti-tank and infantry equipment. Yes, we can actually deploy another division. Yes. Hopefully. Hopefully. Raiding and looting. Ooh, yes, please. Oh, boy. Please, Samara, don't win too fast. No. I'm worried about our northern border as well, so... Even though I could get more stability, 77% is pretty good, and we have to continue strengthening the monarchist influence right now, too, so... Three days, maybe we'll find him. Suslav, Mr. Communist Master himself. How much closer are we to this? Oh, we're almost done with that. We're halfway. That's pretty good. Improve hey, I'm glad I looked over here. Improved infantry rifle. Give him more soft attack. Actually, get some more defense first. Defense and breakthrough, yes. Let's absolutely grab that one. And make some pretty good weaponry, too. Nice. Pursuing Suslov. 
The government's troops had found Sislov's location faster than expected, but it wouldn't matter. Sislov had his belongings packed in an unmarked van ready to leave, just as he needed to burn some papers first. Sislov heard the firefight outside grow closer, and Sislov wished he had chosen a slightly more defensible safe house, as he would have to hurry. He poured the flaming trash can across his desk and began heading towards his escape route. He could hear gunshots from both ends of the hallway, which wasn't a good sign. He entered the garage and saw his men attempting to hold off several government soldiers. Sislov bodyguard, one Maxim Gorlov, shooed at Sislov as they made their way down the stairs, stepping over the man's corpse as they made their way to the van. Sislov's bodyguard got behind the wheel while Sislov himself sat in the back of the van. Before Sislov could get settled, his bodyguard reversed out of the garage with a sounding speed, but his shifting gears, a hail of bullets, shattered the window shield, killing Maxim. Sislov tried to think of a new escape plan, but he couldn't think of anything realistic. The van sat helpless in the street as several soldiers focused, opened the doors, and hauled Sislov out into the open. Comey's shadow master had been captured! We got him on first try! Let's see him plot his way out of a jail cell. Wow! Awesome! Oh, we have a clash of shadows. What does that do? That's really cool. Okay, so we have less political power, recovery rate, ideology, drift defense, despotist support, fascist, ultra-national so national social support as well. Awesome. Now there's a power vacuum for the authoritarian socialism. So it lowered it by 1%. Not bad. But hey, that was actually really awesome. Really, really awesome. That's the case. Let's go with Andrei Zidanev. Maybe? He's been arrested and imprisoned. What do we do with him once they're imprisoned? Do we just hold him there forever? Of course, we need more monarchist influence as well, which is totally cool with me. Wait. R rating and looting. I'm, 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 we're already looking at that. Oh, my mind is just slipping already. Woo! Construction. At least we're trying to build stuff here. Would it be any faster if we try to build this here? What do we want? Minus two. No. Oh, we can only build... Oh, wait, what? Can we build... Hmm. Well... Man, I want to play as a Jewish state so badly. Well, Germany's still looking kind of a mess. Hadris is kind of looking not great. And, well, Goran's looking pretty strong. Unearth the arsenals? Yes. Assemble our forces? Yes. There exist elements within our state that are sympathetic to our goals and motivations, yet we're forbidden among gaining crucial military experience by pr the previous government. We will rectify this as well and expand our recruitment to those that formerly would have been discharged for radicalism and disloyalty by the old republic. Cool. And A is moderately low. Do it again, because we can. Yeah, we got to lower the passionarist and reformist influence. But hey, look, he's looking not bad. Actually, is that, is that the right one? It is. Sad gay, sad gay. Because this one's authoritarian democracy. And, ooh, ooh, yeah. Where's authoritarian socialism is, has no more control? Oh, okay, so they're going to war with each other. Hey, that's pretty good. Opposition data. Subjects were about to run clear, though he's believed to have fled to the north of from Siktivkar following the ouster of the old regime. Sources close to the left as resistance cells claim that Zidanev is hiding in an isolated village somewhere to the remote northern regions of Komi, although his exact location is reportedly being restricted only to the most trusted party cadres, or cadets. Subjects' activities are unclear, and he's suspected of being connected to the production of certain leftist pamphlets found circling in Siktivkar's area. Subjects are additionally suspected of complicity in several terror attacks against military installations, though this is unconfirmed. Analysis. Zidane's own capacities as a leader of armed resistance are limited, but his skills and ideologue and orator should not be underestimated. Penetrating his inner circle in the past has been quite difficult due to the highly indoctrinated and even fanatical nature of many of his closest associates, and it stands as a reason that his present circumstances may only exacerbate this tendency. There is no question that Zidane will resist our government in any way he is able, and it is for this reason that it may be advisable to either capture or kill him. Report concludes. Hmm. We could probably launch an operation, but I don't know if we'll be successful about that. It's posing resistance to our government. Well, they all are, so. Oh god, Western Russia is starting to fall apart. I'm so glad these guys are going to war with these guys up there. Samara's not doing his... What? Oh, they took Kazan. But these guys are holding off. I thought they would have already capitulated by now. Ooh. Keep it up. Oh, Order St. George has got more money. Or more treasure, or more loot. Oh! <gasps> We did it! It only took us like four episodes, but we finally have another division. Yes! Pierre Pujad elected the president of France. Cool. Because what we need here is just as many divisions as possible. Hopefully our IFEs will do well. That's the main bread and butter for us right now, but... Hmm. Moderately low, huh? Actually, stockpiles. We just need more artillery? Oh, AKs are looking great. Enough anti-tank equipment. Yeah, we need more artillery. It's weird. Oaths of loyalty, more stability, 
Army professionalism, yes. Despite everything we could have done, our armament programs and recruitment programs, an army is nothing more than but a mob of ill-organized rival without competent officers and quality training. We must assemble our army's high command and consult the officers of the Republican Army who have remained loyal to us for a comprehensive new program of training and disciplining our forces. Very good. I want to go to war as fast as also Oh, no. Oh, God, look at that. <clears throat> Well, okay, so, Zidana could only hear his heavy, labored breathing over the shouting of soldiers and revving of engines as he ran through the streets of Siktivkar. He had heard them a fair distance away from the apartment he had hiding out since since the change in government. It seemed that the man hiding him had sold him out. Thus, he wriggled his way out of the building and into the street. The voices were getting louder, the hellhounds having narrowed down his position to his back alley. Too god dang old for this, he thought the aging fugitive as he gripped the lip of a dumpster, hauling himself in among the putrid garbage and letting the lid enclose him in darkness. It wasn't much of a hiding place, nor a dignified one, but Zidana wasn't a man who could pass off this kind of opportunity. Now he could make out the words of the soldiers looking for him. Simple call-outs mostly, but they were getting closer. He could hear them just outside his rotten hiding place. The footsteps paused, Zidana held his breath, but one sound betrayed him. As he stiffened up, an empty can crunched under his elbow. In there! shouted one of the soldiers, and a light came pouring back into the dumpster as the lid was thrown open. A hand gripped Zidana by the arm and was hauled, screaming out of the dumpster. Fascist dogs, you can't do this, you've killed Russia! For all... Zidana to no avail as he found himself once again in the darkness. This time he was in a truck, presumably bound for prison. Rotten luck. M more fit more political power. 50. 50 more. More stability. Awesome. We have been doing really, really well with this stuff. Holy cow. Hey, Monarcho or Ordo Socialist. Mm, not today. Uh let's see. Well, the left well, I guess we're we continue we're continually trying to find elements of the left, so we must continue with that idea, right? Only minus 4% political power now. It's not bad. Roughly one a day is not bad. And we've been able to capture those people and imprison them. Hopefully they don't do a prison riot, but that's just me. Yes. Oh, I love the Order of St. George. They're just here to be our punching bag. I just... I hope we can fight against these guys. Actually, we gotta save some political power up too, because if we actually like beat our neighbors, which we hopefully will, we're gonna need political power to core their territory. So, and trying to fight to Croatia. I think someone played as Croatia. I think it was Taki Senpai played as Croatia. Oh, Croatia! He's got this. He's got a weird smile. Weird cheeks. Not his smile's weird. But that's just me. Oh God, yeah, everything fell apart here. Pretty normal. Did our normal. Go ahead when you can. Ooh, a little bit of lag, a little bit of lag. Hopefully they don't resist us. They refuse tribute though. All right, so be it. Let's see what you got. Because even if we, when we win, we still get more stuff. Never another union. It was cold, so so very cold. Svetlana Bukharina shivered with how cold it was and gritted her teeth hard. The only thing that kept her attention busy was the chirping of the bird on her shoulder, which she had to forcefully keep shut whenever she heard footsteps from the robe. She knew that the process of crossing a border was painful, but being alone with the potential to be shot by a soldier of a republic that now saw you as an enemy of the nation filled her with an emotion that she was familiar with, with yet refused to interact with whenever it would made its motions. Fear. That's what Bukharina felt. At any point while she made her way towards Bologda, she was afraid of feeling the piercing shot of a bullet through her skull, to meet the same fate that surely many in Komi would, and disappear into history, not unlike her father before her. What carried her through the night was not only her sharp senses and the fact that she knew when to move and to say when put. No, if she wished to not be dead by daylight, laying in a pool of her own blood, it was determination to keep her going. Svetlana Bukharina had, her, had resolved and would not end up like her father. She refused to let herself vanish into the thin air, even as her ambitions were suffocated and her goals brought to a sudden, unsatisfied unsatisfying halt. That grit pushed her through her cold, pushed through the cold, keeping her bird safe in the grasp, and as hours drew by and energy left her body, the cold seeping through her clothes and biting into her skin, she lived. Cowed but not broken, Svetlana Bukharina lived. Oh, okay. Border conflict, looking like we're struggling a little bit, but that's okay. Scavenge for loot. I, I want more loot, man. I said we had to get more stuff. S Svetlana has left the country, so we couldn't arrest her. But, you know, whatever. We need more influence, but we'll get more time to get more influence from him. Ooh, the right successful, that's what I thought. And Svetlana Stalino? Sure, why not? We beat the guy up. <laughs> we beat a guy. All right, oaths of loyalty. There's an important question of vexing the political apparatus of the state and the military apparatus alike. The question regards the oaths of loyalty that each soldier is to take. The old republic had set up old oaths dedicated to protecting and upholding democracy, the republic, and the Komi constitution, which will clearly not do. However, the factions that make up our current government are conflicted as to which form of the new oaths shall take. The more monarchist-inclined groups wish to restore the Tsarist oaths, swearing loyalty to a crown and throne that we currently vacate. 
Uh, the more mainstream elements of the government, though, on the other hand, wish to reward the old Republican oaths to fit a newer, stronger state. There are even some elements within the state that view the Soviet oaths and their commitment to ideology as a possible model. The army must come to a decision to ensure the loyalty of our troops and a uni united military. More stability? Don't mind if we do. Hey, equipment? Yes. We lose some war sport, but that's okay. The new national army. Theodore. Clutched the gun, his fingers numb. He trained himself to tremble less and at the right spots to keep his gun sights level and his aim clear, but the price he paid for it was a shooting. Felt like like less an action and more like a twitch. The target seemed so very far away and he thought of his home now further still. Loud and clear, the old voices rang in his mind. Only a man can fight for his home. Only a man can do this. And if the rebuilding of Russia needs anyone, Fyodor needs you. His parents, his brother. The army had long been his second home, but he never gotten his duty to the first. The crucifix around his neck shuddered as the shots rang out. One, two, three, then silence. Fyodor lowered his gun. It seemed like he's been mostly on point for today's rounds. The stained hammer and sickle icon the passport target had been shot into oblivion with its white scraps hanging on by a wire lattice base. The sergeant nodded, <coughs> wrote chicken scribble numbers into a book, and dismissed him. <coughs> As Fyodor left, he smiled wanly. Perhaps rifle inspection would be too late today. Well, it invariably ended up later than anyone could predict, and far later than anyone was ever com capable, comfortable with. At least the meals were better now that they've ousted the god dang Bolsheviks in the canteen. <clears throat> Dmitri nodded to him as he passed into the cramped bunk quarters. A little tuck was necessary, and a little tuck was offered. Two men cleaning their weapons together. A pastime as old as time itself, and the two traded rifle oil and cleaning brushes. There was an air of near amity. Dmitri finished, reassembled the bulky mess of parts into its gleaming hole. Then he knelt, taking well worn beads from his left pocket, and began to mumble as the beads slipped between his fingers. A prayer for his enemies, and for Siktivkar, and for the men who would lay their lives betwixt the two. Fyodor mouthed his own silent prayer beside him. Army XP and a bonus of line doctrine, which we have not done yet. And if you want to read about the relics of the past, go right ahead, because it happens occasionally. Because we sometimes have to win battles to get that. Ten factories, god dang one, two. Yeah, we still need more. Oh, actually, we have enough for now. What we could really use is, of course, planes, but artillery. Which means the past, if you would like to read that, go right ahead. Hey, we got a civilian factory, not even political power, which. I was hoping for political power, but hey, another civilian factory is not bad with me. Oh boy. <coughs> oh boy, that's not good. That is really not good. I'm now getting a little worried about this. Cool. Ugh, oh, Zukov, god dang it. You have quite a bit of manpower, but we have more. They have more factories than us. <coughs> but they have 60 to 10 divisions, so we might do okay. Gods of the North, nothing but nonsense. Oh boy, did men come over? They call him the Father. I... Oh. Subject whereabouts regarding Selina Svetlana, Eosovana, Eosivovna. Are known. Her whereabouts are known since the establishment of the new government. Scattered reports have surfaced of a female bearing a strong resemblance to the subject being sighted near Storozhevsk. The follow-up work with police has been without result. Stalina is not to be underestimated and is a savvy political op orator or operator who is likely to be working to build a united front against liberal opposition groups. She is most certainly accompanied by some of her loyal associates, in particular former General Petro Grigorenko in conjunction with whom she possesses a serious insurgent threat to our government. Her liquidation should be undertaken at the earliest opportunity possible. Report concludes. Let's see if we can find her. And then we're going to do strengthen the monarchists as well. That's why we've got a rush to do Western uh, Russia. Samara, they finally took out Tatarstan. Vologda's looking kind of thick. Vyadka's kind of hanging out. And these guys are fighting each other, which is fine. And then you guys have, well, these guys up here. Hmm. Not looking great for us. But 11 factories, not bad. 6 civilians. 5 military. Hopefully we can make this division quick enough. We can always auto-deploy them early on if we have to. Oh. oh, oaths of loyalty, don't mind if we do. The anti-Bolshevik pact. The city of Yatka, under the Tsar Vladimir III, is not an ideal ally, indeed. In a less desperate situation, it would be considered an enemy to strike down as soon as possible. However, we do not have the luxury of such an idyllic situation. With a growing red storm to our north, we must approach the pretender Tsar for the good of both of us. Once, only once the Reds are defeated, may we have the luxury of reconsidering our foreign policy situation. We must approach Vyaka with a proposition or a proposed anti-Bolshevik pact for mutual defense and shared training until the sacred act or task of casting down the communists is completed. 
If we can get a pact with them, that'd be great. Their oaths of loyalty. Gumalev had never seen a priest quite so agitated as the one before him now. It was almost amusing, like a cat stripped of its favorite toy and left to mew in its own frustrations. Unlike a cat, however, he had no real option to leave the priest by the roadside. No, the god bother would follow and nag at the man until one or the other expired of exhaustion, irritation, or both. He sighed, rubbing his sore temples and turning his mind to the matter at hand. Acknowledgement of the role of the church and the oath of service is not some trivial matter. This is a matter of eternal life, for if these men do not die with God in their hearts, they will lack the resolve to carry on. The priest nodded animatedly. Naturally, the church would like to all fighting men to pray for the health of their leader as well. Gumalayov gestured for the priest to take a seat. He looked around his office for a tea sachet. Surely the man would have his tongue stilled if nothing else. Thank you for your attention, Father. And turn... In truth, I was thinking of adopting oaths from one of the most familiar to us. As you know, we are a Christian nation, but not all of our subjects have the privilege of baptism. My advisors have suggested a modified version of the Soviet oath. He raised his hands against his already sp spluttering priest. And yes, we are well aware of the church would not be pleased with this, to put it lightly. Which is why I was thinking of a simple oath to the Russian state, until the spiritual health and loyalty of our subjects are ready for a full oath to God's appointed trustee. It is a compromise, and I am sure, I assure you we will think of something better, but it will do for now. Time to chase away the cat. He had the affairs of men to settle. Have a good day, Father. My receptionist will receive you. Our soldiers will know that Father and God and Tsar. A simple oath of state will suffice. S Soviet oaths are pr practical choice. Oh, our soldiers will know their God and Tsar. Yes. Yes. Absolutely a thousand billion times yes. We must find Alexei. But happy May 5th. We're actually going through this relatively quickly compared to some of the older episodes in this campaign. <clears throat> mm, off. Comey has so many different leaders here. I, there's, I'm going to play Comey so many different times because I want to try out Gumaleyev for real, Serov, uh, Shafarovich, which I heard is kind of like a more boring route, maybe to a degree. Was it that guy? Yeah, I think it was that guy. Maybe a little bit more boring. But whatever happened to the Lady of Steel? Svetlana nodded to the men. And women across the table, a half smile on her lips. We thank you for your proposition and your generosity in hosting this meeting. My party will, of course, consider it. Rising up to offer handshake, her mind is far away. There's always something else to be done for the PSD. Another conference, another stack of paperwork, another rally to speak at. Even though, even so, she makes sure to keep the smile on her face as she nods. She knows as she steps out of the doors of the conference hall into the windy streets that something is wrong. It's the instinct of a dog sensing a strangely hot and ashen wind upon his coat, or that of a bird hearing the crash of distant waves. Or perhaps it's the fact that the street is empty at what's supposed to be a peak hour in the capital, and the fact there's a station wagon parked at the end of the street. Svetlana passes a binder to an aide, whispers, Swordfish. Rendezvous limestone, and begins to walk hurriedly in the other direction. The rest of the staff whisper to themselves and disperse, scattering to the four winds. If something goes wrong, Stalina will suffer alone. Her work will be preserved, and the PSD will be given a fighting chance to escape ahead of the bullet. Stalina focuses her breath, thinking only the men and women who have served her. Every step she will take uh, will bury her followers a little bit more time to safety. 11, 12, 13. Footsteps follow behind her in perfect lockstep with hers. She grits her teeth, paces. 15, 16, 17. She takes a sudden twist down the alleyway and runs. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, as she is brought to the ground by policemen, she prays to a god that she doesn't believe in, that her friends and her party made it up. That's all that matters, she thinks, as the bag goes over her head. It, I bought them time, that's all that matters. I'm sorry I couldn't delay them more. Nice. Awesome. Well, we didn't get, you know, Svetlana Bukharina, but we've got Miss Stalina. Oh, yes. And Nikolai, the old president. We must find him. Hey, Monarch in influence is significant. Nice. Good. Good. Yeah, we have 57 army XP. That's kind of nice. Anti-Bolshevik pact. Now, I'm not sure what's going to happen. We have to wait for Vyaka to say if we have a form to pact with them. Joint army maneuvers looks pretty good. Officer exchanges looking not too bad. The Civil War relieved. Or relived. Ooh. The Pretender's Betrayal. We'll be crushed like the rest. Propaganda offensive. Recognize our strength. Which is not bad for more division defense on a quarter territory. And Ring of Steel, now what's going to happen? We're going to wait and see if they offer us or accept the pact. Come on. Because we have we can wait for 10 days, so. Of course they would refuse our offer. Of course. Why wouldn't they? And the telegram looking into the possibilities of an alliance with the monarchists in the south was sent to Vyaka. We expected that Tsar Vladimir would see how much we have in common. How dire our situation is against numerous enemies. However... From what we can 
gather from the reply hastily sent by our, their own foreign office. The minute differences in our ideologies have been enough for them to reject the offer of an alliance, or at least justify doing so. Of course, we have been limited to our beliefs of the greatness of the Russian nation and its people, as well as their will to oppose the communists, the Germans, and all other enemies. We chose not to blindly follow the ideals of monarchism that only appeal to the elite of the elite, and ignore the true will of the people of all classes, despite the doubts by very few of the rights members. Perhaps we were absolutely right in doing so. Maybe we should have gotten Taborizky much more influence first, but he is the most influential group here, 30%. Any diplomatic channels and backdoors between us and Vyadka had remained open had been closed in the aftermath of what is perceived as a diplomatic betrayal, especially when the WRRF looms over us ominously. For all intents and purposes, all prospects of befriending the Tsarists have ended. From now on, the only diplomatic interaction we will have against them will be their instrument of surrender when the war inevitably comes between us and them. Much more dangerous threats exist now. For shame. Recognize our strength. We're going to wait for that. Let's get some more manpower. Clearly, the supposed Tsar has proven himself an enemy of our state, and by extension, an enemy of all the peoples of Russia. Through a repurposing of our broadcast infrastructure and the abundance of print shops in the cities, we will begin a propaganda offensive against him and his cruel backwards regime. The Russian people must be led to realize that the state of Vyaka is not the future of Russia. It's a relic of a dark, ineffectual past, a little better than the Reds themselves. Absolutely. So we got this done, which is great. I'm going to get even more factory output now. I... I know we should do land auction stuff, but we we don't have that many research slots. <laughs> Moderately strong, nice, good. This is 21 days. Ooh, opposition. So subject's whereabouts regarding Vaznesensky Nikolai are unknown since the establishment of the new government. Though subject has been allegedly been cited on multiple occasions in the YB area immediately to the south of Siktivkar. However, it should be noted that these witnesses should not be considered necessarily reliable due to severe discrepancies in their stories, and there are other reports suggesting they may have fled. Chloe entirely may be in Vyatka. Although former president Vosin Vosnesinsky is not known for his political tact, it is believed to be entirely possible that he still commands a degree of loyalty from some remnants of the old regime. His neutralization or liquidation is regarded as a high priority and would likely prove a crippling blow to liberal anti-regime opposition. Launch an offensive. Immediately. Immediately. It's kind of cool that we're hunting down our old opposition. Or our current opposition, really. Or, I guess you could say, potential opposition. But god dang. Look how much, put, uh, not political power, but stability and war support. We have 90% each. That's not bad. That's pretty darn good. We do have high taxes, though. Ooh. I don't like that. We could locate Alexi. I still want more influence, just in case. Mm. Oh, we still have successful raid. Oh, god, they're so big. That's not going to be easy. You know what? Let's go with this. I'm going to pull you out. Just in case. Because he's going to have to go room, room. Mm. Well, everyone here is politically connected. So, god dang it. Engineer. Let's go grab this guy. Ooh, actually, no. He's got three level 3 attack. we got to get this guy then. He's got more attack. So. No one has upgrade. So, be it. Whatever. And... Sounds like an event. And Tricky Dick is gone. <clears throat> Goodbye, Tricky Dick. Can Kennedy hold the nation together? Well, let's hope we can hold his head together. Order St. George. You know what? As a final rally cry, this is probably the last time we'll be able to do this. And we'll form just a defensive line. Thank goodness. that one In one episode, someone said you can form a defensive front line that just throws all the guys together on the line. So, ooh. Cut and run. Vosnesinski slammed the brakes on his car, screeching to a halt in the middle of the road in the back country of what used to be his ho homeland. With his tired eyes, he had failed to notice a barricade occupying the road before him. Concrete barriers manned by soldiers hunched down and armed with rifles blocked his path to freedom just a hundred feet ahead of him. He cursed himself. How had they known he, he was going to go this way? Had he not covered his tracks well enough? One of the soldiers called out, cutting the tent's silence and urging their former leader to slowly step out of the car. He complied. His shoes crunching the gravel beneath him as he slid out of the front seat and slowly began walking towards the barricade. Hands behind his head, the once proud defender of this country walked a death march towards the soldiers of those who crushed his chance at freeing Comey. Abruptly, he felt a pain between his shoulder blades as he shoved to the ground, colliding with his skirt in a daze. Discombobulated and unable to resist, he found him the rest shackled within seconds. Now covered in dust and brushed, bruised from the rocks and divots in the path, he was dragged off and thrown carelessly into the back of a truck. There was nothing he could do for Comey now, and so he fell asleep to the subtle purr of the engine. Ooh, purr, purr for me. Off to prison or worse. Nice. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And let's recognize our strength. Our state is situated in a strategically useful area with abundant resources, population, and industry. The commies, as evil as they are, after all, would not have made Ust 
Seuss will lost their temporary capital without reason. We must remind our people of this, that we are strong, that our soldiers are the greatest in Russia, and with the will to protect their families and the nation that they love. We do not need allies, for allies are merely temporary, transient things in the shifting mass of allegiances that is now the new Russia. No, it is better to stand on our own and strive out against the dark. We lose stability, but 400 days, that's fine. We've been getting so much more stability anyways. And what if we do? And it's time to locate Alexei Kosygin. Because we have four out of six here. One, two, three, four, seven. Cool. We're merely arresting you. We are not going to do anything bad to you for now. So, I don't mind maybe purchasing more equipment. Can I actually buy artillery from them? If we could buy artillery, that'd be okay. Military access. I uh, where are they? They're down here, aren't they? I thought they were down here. Maybe I'm, oh, they're right here. Ooh, how do we do that? It's only ten political power. Request access. Meh. Let's, let's initiate a raid so we can do this at least one more time, which, which we will do probably new schools. Yeah, let's do new schools. Schools are good. Hey, they paid the tribute. Great. Thank you. Hmm. You know, actually, screw it. Just go back there. Yeah, having him as a separate front line is not probably a good idea. Probably not. Beautiful. But hey, with this whole Warlord thing, we're doing pretty darn well. 3.5 every month, then to 42, or really 2 a month for research facilities, 6 a month for agriculture, almost 100 for poverty, 6 a month, and 102 for industrial equipment. I mean, by the time we get to the regional stage, well, hopefully when we'll get there, we'll actually be doing pretty darn well. Strengthen Monarchist influence some more, because we can. A hand towards open fire. Oh boy, he had cut communications with everyone he knew for a while now. For the past day, Kosygin was alone, his mind aching at the thought of what, was going, of what was going back home, and yet he couldn't dare to turn back. He knew what had happened, how Komi fell into chaos. Every hour, every minute, he cursed himself for not taking enough action. He knew the eventual fate of Komi, yet he kept himself silent. Now he had paid the ultimate price, and the only thing that came his way was downfall. He hadn't learned about the fate of Svetlana Selina, a fact that haunted him every step of the way. There were the fates of so many to worry about, but he shared with her a sort of grim opinion of Komi's democracy that unfortunately turned out to be true. Now, guided by the struggles of Moonlight, his escape from the compromised nation came into fruition. In the thick forest, there were no guards, no t Tanakas or Tachankas. Nothing that could stop him. Only the wind blowing and the idle sound of forest life. Even then, his nerves were on guard, and Kostajim felt that the, this trip through the forest would be the makings of a new source of paranoia. But he had to be brave to sh the sheer emptiness of it all, the lack of human life, and pray that he would not suddenly receive a bullet to the back. At the crack of next dawn, Kostajim found himself on the other side. He wasn't sure what sort of freedom he would find, and he didn't know if he would truly be a better fate than death at the hands of the radicals. But he had already made his choice long ago, and he would reap the rewards and suffer the consequences for it. But Nesunsky's idea was dead, and Kostajim wanted nothing, nothing further to do with it. Not anymore. So, he looks like he just left, so. You know what? That's not bad. We have two, four out of six out of them, especially... The most dangerous of them all, the commies, and then we have arrested Stalina, as well as the old president, so we are going to halt direct operations. The search for the key targets who pose a threat to stability to our government has finally come to an end. The security forces are standing down and focusing their efforts on other pressing matters. Let us hope that their mission was not in vain and that the stability of our young administration has been ensured. We've done enough. Yeah, we can't get everyone, I'm pretty sure, I'm more than sure we couldn't be, we would get everyone. I, I'm pretty sure that would have already, this the, the decisions to do that probably would have already left anyways but hey we've got the most dangerous leaders except for you know what was it Bukharina and Kostajin I don't think Kostajin would be really too much of a problem but I could be wrong oh Penzi declared war on Oberkommando Brauschenstadt whatever it is cool a ring of steel there's no <clears throat> oh my voice went there went cracked there there's no single defense plan that is sufficient to defend ust Sisolosk from all the threats that surround us. With a hostile Tsar in the south, the erratic fanatics of the Gaini to the east, the liberals to the west in the front pr practically on our doorstep to our capital, we must seek a single, all-encompassing solution to our defensive woes. And that solution shall come in the form of a ring of steel. A vast network of fortifications must be constructed around our frontier to defend our state from attack. While we do not have the resources to form a strong consecutive string of fortifications, we shall be able to construct enough small border forts to ensure that our attacks are greatly dissuaded. Ust Sistolosk shall be secure from attack from any angle, leaving us to free to plot our grand reclamation of Russia. In which we do get some more stability, which is nice. Brauschstadt. Cool. Oh, Samara's on the roll. On, on the goal to take out Gorky. Oh, boy. Alano Lozano, elected president of Mexico. Uh, the Partido Revolucionario Institucional, elected president of Mexico. Free, rare free trade advocate within his party. Huh. The democracy. 
Hmm. Well, there goes Speer. Goodbye, Speer. 69, nice. Oh, we could scavenge for loot. At this point, I don't think it's really worth it. And there goes the president. Build new schools. We can either do Vologda or Vyatka. We can't do these guys anymore, huh? Oh, we really don't like Vyatka. I think at this point... Hmm. Well, let's get some more research first going. Give me more defensive breakthrough. We gotta get it. Russia awaits. Demand the order submission. Hopefully we can get to that quickly. I don't know if we'd actually be able to beat anyone here. We can risk it. Why not? We can risk it and try it. Be fine. We steal. Do we have any more research coming along? Not yet. 140 days. So must as well read. Russia awaits. We've prepared enough. Going through all the preliminary strokes or strokes of diplomacy and armament. Now is the time for the expansion and the reunification of the motherland. Russia awaits and our west open for our taking. There lies only our enemies standing in the way. There are many and we are few, but with the will of the Russian people on our side, alongside our connections and formidable arsenal, our state shall emerge triumphant and reclaim our fair lands. With our preparations complete, the only left thing, thing left to do is to issue our orders to our diplomats and generals and prepare for the greatest string of conflict that we shall face yet. Eyes all around. There is a cold silence in the heart of the Republic of Komi that echoes in formerly business market squares, stealing the lively tongues of the merchants who have come from all of our sective cars environs. The rumors have begun to spread and they cannot be suppressed. Vologda, uh, Vologda has refused, it has said. On all sides, Komi is embattled and the armies grow ever closer in the Black Knight, like a sheet over the borders. It grasps the heart of senior citizens who watch the false cheerfulness of the news and look into the long, darkened closets, wondering if the old firearms are still working and if their aim is sharp in their old age as it was at first. So, to the hearts of soldiers and generals, shifting or stifling their cheer and dulling the gleam of their boots. No one is willing to say what they really think, but there are, but they all are looking to their old homes and to reprieve and gentle obscurity. There is a time coming when they will no longer have the luxury of the former. There is a cold silence, too, in the leadership. The options of the Republic have run dry. There is no one coming to save them, and what good is a government that cannot look... It's people in the eye and tell them that things will, in due course, get better. The staffers, of course, are forbidden from even discussing such things. It scarcely matters. Just as the ravens sense the coming of a storm, so too can the public sense the in inexorable, inexorable approach of a problem the coming can no longer deal with. <clears throat> in a village to the south of Siktivkyar, children play the timeless games of all children play everywhere. They run, aiming mock pistols and bows at each other, giggling as they hide behind walls and bushes. 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 A mother, watching them, fingers a pistol in her own handbag. Perhaps one day she will take her child to the range and she should ask and should he ask why she will merely whisper into his ear, with the grace of someone who can no longer protect her love, you may be a soldier's son soon, too. Oh boy. A letter to the legislature. To the legislature of the Republic of Komi, greetings from the front, your old ally. We come to you in peace, this letter being our olive branch, in recognition of our common democratic traditions. We address this letter, not to the President of the Republic, but its legislature. The front no has, has no hostile intentions at the present against the Republic, nor w the will to subvert its democracy. Well... Uh, I guess they didn't get the memo, we're not a democracy. The Front recognizes that both it and the Republic has had a long, often hostile history together today, however. The Front is willing to put it all behind, should the Republic wish to do so. We solemnly ask that, in the name of democracy and socialism, that the Republic join us as comrades once again. Let brothers and sisters link their hands in a new march for the future, and let our enemies tremble. We implore that the Republic of Komi would see reason. To yourself lies perils to your democracy, the Aryan Brotherhood, the Emperor now restored in Biatka, as well as the Liberation Army whose intents remain unknown. And joining our arms together, we shall protect ourselves against domination from forces hostile to Lenin and Marx's dream of communism. In joining us, we would like to recall the images of Rome and its Italic allies as one united power. None shall challenge the mind of our armies in the field with the Republic's personnel, personnel and the front's expertise. None can stand for long. In addition, all crimes committed during the West Russian War shall be rendered moot. We implore you again to see reason. We expect an answer immediately. Signed, Mikhail Georgi... Mikhail? is Marshal Georgi Zukov. Begin the talks. They are balking up the wrong tree. We shall not bend to these communists. And actually, we got to make sure that these guys are actually over here. Because i got to zoom, zoom, and I want to encircle that division as fast as possible. Ooh, they've got engineers, too. That's not good. I forgot that the Aryan Brotherhood was still existed. Huh. And they're probably going to declare war on us. Oh, we're so close. We need just seven more pieces of artillery. Go low. No, oh, Himmler has been victorious in the English Civil War. Oh, cool. Overwhelm the government of Cornwall. Wow. Hmm, it's not going to be good. Really not going to be good. W what are you doing? G get back over there. I told you to move over there. You have, you have to stay there. 
Yeah. So we can move over there quickly. <clears throat> Even though there looks like there's probably a river between us two, so. Ooh. I want to do that, but... Mm. <laughs> Against the Order of St. George. They, they threaten us. They're probably going to go to war with us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh. The Volgas, huh? Russia awaits. Demand the Order of Submission. The Order of St. George has caused one, that one may consider righteousness to honor God and to oppose the anarchy that has consumed the motherland. However, they are insular, radical, and unwilling to cooperate with outsiders, viewing them as insufficiently pious at best and outright heretical at worst. For better or for worse, we must end this policy by force and issue an ultimatum to the monks of the Squirrel's Nest Fortress. Submit to our state and be free to practice the religion without, within our borders, following our laws, and face or face our armies on the battlefield. Well, hopefully, they see reason. <clears throat> then again, we kind of did the same thing uh, with other with these guys up here. So actually, you know what? I should make an, our division stronger right now. Let's see. Both of you are 12 combat width. You are the only one who has 20, 15 combat width, really. So that's a case. I'm going to throw on. We don't have no more artillery. We got plenty of guns, though. Right, we got plenty of guns. More than enough guns. Ooh, we need more anti-tick equipment, too. If that's kind of okay, we'll do that one for now. With you guys, can we throw on at least one more infantry battalion just to make our guys stronger? Not better, just stronger. Ooh, we might actually be able to do that, because artillery is what we're really lacking here. Can we do it again, maybe? Good. We only have 78 in reserve, but that's okay. Hey, that's okay. We're going to make our guys as strong as possible right now before any sort of war breaks out. You guys are looking 10 combat with. God dang it. Uh, but you know what? That'll make these guys, you guys stronger. And hopefully you guys get a little bit stronger too. Alright, Bormann conquers Goring's Germany. Ooh, we could try this. <clears throat> oh, oh, that's not good down there. Oh, look at that. Oh boy. Good prepare a raid. Oh, we could risk it. I'm waiting any day now that they want to go to war with us. Ooh, this is really risky. Borman wins the German Civil War. They don't have that many divisions on the border. Hopefully we can put these guys down a little bit. And then maybe demand their submission after we raid them. <laughs> oh man, come on, come on, go, 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 go. Come on, get done, get done. Initiate it. Do it as fast as possible. Please, just give in, give in, give in, give in. Oh, yes, yes, they did it. Woo! Nice. And we can finally do one more thing here regarding our societal development. Research facilities, workers. Uh, updated research. Eh, that could help. Workers, tools. Yeah, let's get some more workers' tools then. Or just workers, not workers' tools. We have 83... Keep doing that for now. That'd be good. Train our troops. We gave more manpower, but I think we have enough for now. I do like that one, though. Come on, Vyaka. You gotta hold. Oh, wait. They're actually fighting. I thought they are fighting the Samara. No. They're fighting these guys over here. Demand the order of submission. Come on. We just beat you up. Come on. Please. 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 Join us. Join us. Join us. Give me your divisions. If possible. Come on. Oh. There goes another lens now. They stand to... Oh, they said... Oh, well, okay. Well, okay. Sure, why not? We're going to war them immediately. So, in an unexpected turn of events, the Order of St. George has refused our demands and stands defined even in the face of our overwhelming martial superiority. They are already reinforcing their borders and preparing for the inevitable conflict, but this effort is almost certainly futile. Our forces outnumber theirs by a considerable margin, and this war is not likely to take long. Three. Two. One. Well, come on, we don't have that much time. Just go ahead. Just go ahead. Push in as fast as you can. Oh! Okay, so... People for liberation of who? Ah, Samara clear one Viac. Oh, boy. Hopefully, the Aryan Brotherhood can give Samara a run for the money. So, you know, you keep them there. You go there, there, there. Go, 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 go. Cool. Hey, we cut him off. Go ahead and kill them off. Do we need anything more than that? 
Hopefully not. There we go. But this is so bad, it sends our border even more. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, they had all their divisions around there too. Oh, crudderinos. Rebuild the monasteries? Embrace the order? Let's see if we can embrace the order. With the Gainey settlement under our control and the order now within our jurisdiction, now is a prime opportunity to set a precedent for our future religious policy. As always, the factions within our government are split on the issue, and there's a wider range of theories stretching from cracking down on religion to embracing the Orthodox Church as a central pillar of Russian culture. Throughout our state, other religious groups are looking to our policy on this issue as guidance towards what they too should expect in the future from our government's policies. I just hope that the WRFFR does not try to come kill us yet. Oh, wait. What? How did they... What? How did... What? Hold on. They were smacking the hell out of Yadka. And then they they lose. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And hopefully we can core these areas. And integrate them. Go ahead and do that. Ooh. I don't know if we'll actually be able to integrate that before time is up. We're pretty much done raiding for now. Ooh. Strong influence from the monarchists. Oh yeah. I want to get at least higher than the passionarists as well as the reformists, so. Oh, where are they headed to? Oh, man. Embrace the order, as well as rebuild the monasteries. Although the monasteries and fortresses controlled by the order of Grand, not even they were immune to ravages of war and the bombings. Throughout the long decades of shame experienced by Russia, the churches and monasteries of Gainius stood strong, but now have escaped entirely unscathed. As a show of goodwill towards the Order of St. George and towards the Orthodox Church in general, the more traditionalist elements of our government have advocated for a comprehensive program to rebuild the religious architecture of Ganey. The reception of this plan has been mixed, and with more modernist elements rallying against it as a waste of valuable resources. Cool. Embracing the Church. Okay, they went to war with Vologda instead. Okay. Well, so be it. The general staff were seldom caught by surprise. It was in the nature of the job to predict the unpredictable, to catch the curveball and throw it in the enemy's face. The aspect of their operational doctrine had been changed, unchanged. Even as the politics of the state tumbled like a loose cup of dirt in the strong breeze, no one, however, had anticipated a situation quite like this. The so-called chaplains in front of them, self-appointed, of course, had barred the doors of a barracks after being expelled, calling down the old fire from heaven in their own defense. Apparently, these renegade priests had taken it upon themselves the solemn duty of trying to evangelize to the infantrymen, beseeching them to convert for the health of the nation and Lev Gumilev. They made the fatal error of approaching a company whose ranks were dominated by old Soviet veterans, and for that mistake they were sent upon uh, the irritated and godless. They had taken the intervention of the military police to set them apart. A priest, lips still bleeding but head unbowed, rose to speak. This is a travesty that the David of Russia, the bearer of the mantle of God, shall have the godless of his, as his servants and his conquerors? This is a spiritual crisis. We demand the right to administer his medicine. A general rose to speak, still trembling slightly from his age. My men would follow the orders of our state anywhere, but to impose upon them a church, they reject a sure path to disaster. I ask for the modern moderation that we've always seen in you. There must be a better way to build Russia anew than to hang the cross upon the necks of all its subjects. Kick the church out of politics entirely. We must follow the will of God. Leave them to preach only to their fellow Christians. Obviously, there's no question which way we must go. I really don't trust these guys. Okay. <clears throat> Hopefully Vologda holds on. Can I go to war with them? I want to go to war with them now. We have to, it's best to go to war with them now since they're busy trying to fight Vologda. Come on, let me go to war. Uh, hopefully we can integrate Gainey first too. Do they have any factories here? No. We do get, oh, oh, we get some oil. That's not bad. Local police force. Yeah, Germany restores control over Central Europe. Uh, use default control. Civilian oversight. We get less compliance. Oh, actually, we actually get more compliance if we do it like this. Oh, hold on. Oh, they're justifying. They're justifying. Oh, wait, are they manually doing it or do they focus? Fo march on the old capital. Oh, crap. <gasps> Just in time, we got another division. Eight divisions. Yes. We might actually lose control of Gainey first. Okay, so where are you guys? So we're going to try to get to Ukta first and circle that division and kill them off. Yes. Go to war with me. Go to war with me. Go to war with me. Strength the monarchist influence. Yes, yes, yes. Go to war with me. Come on. So we can help out Vologda at the same time. Because they're going quickly through Vologda, which is not good. Oh my gosh, we lost all that manpower. <sighs> Go and do that for now. We need to keep that extra manpower. And help with our stuff. We build the monasteries. Anti-Bolshevik maneuvering. The West Russian Revolutionary Front to our north represents the greatest threat to our state and the successful creation of a Russia free comp of communist influence. However, the likelihood that we will be able to cast it down right away is insufficient to our, to our generals entirely certain. 
Uh, to this, we must determine a policy towards our consolidation of the region, securing a barrier against the front's expansion before striking it down or launching a preemptive attack while the front is distracted with other matters. More war support, political power. Come on, go, 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 kill me. Re okay! They declared war. Rebuilding the monasteries. The territory once owned by the Order of St. George has fallen under our control, and our forces have begun to restore order in the area. As with all conquests that we succeed in, different regional questions must be addressed for our different areas, and Guinea is no the exception. The Order, as the name implies, was highly religious, and much of their funds were poured into the monasteries and churches. Over time, however, many of these houses of worship have been decayed, whether from natural elements, stray bullets, or shells, or German bombs, the constant among them being that most are in a state of disrepair. The Rite and Comey. It's predominantly religious, excluding Sirat's clique. But the topic of funding to repair the churches has struck a nerve. Arguments fly back and forth between each side. For those for it claim that even ignoring the uh, obvious religious reasons, such a move would undoubtedly win favor from the local populace. Those against it argue that such funding would be better spent on state matters such as military. In the end, a decision must be made. Who matters more, God or the state? The churches shall be rebuilt. We have better things to spend it on. The churches will be rebuilt. So we got that focus done immediately, which is kind of cool. So we can't do anything down here, so we can finally focus on the war with him. When a united right-wing coalition was announced, few could have believed an alliance of different parties was possible. Even fewer believed that this coalition could get into power. However, those skeptics are now proving themselves right as a faction leaders feud and bicker amongst themselves. The question of when it will collapse is not a matter of if, but when. The civil servants who run the country must be prepared for the coalition's dissolution and return to factionalism and infighting, ensuring that the new power struggle will not be as destructive as the old. Alright, so now we're at war. We're going to just do a little bit and then we'll end the episode just because this video's gone quite a bit. It's kind of hard to see the individual tiles. Hopefully we can do well. If they want to march in, so be it. My goal is to kill these guys off first. Uh, sure. Let them march in for now. Because my goal is to march in and take whatever they have as well. Hopefully you guys can go quickly, but obviously they're trying to go over a river. Hey, but they're doing okay. Can we at least encircle someone before they leave? Actually, both of you attack. Just get over to there first. That'll be great. Oh, you, oh! thank goodness we got a division in there. Arrival of anti-communist guard. Hey! Great news has arrived from our country. It is no secret that the war against the, well, the communists of the north, the vanguards of socialism in the region, has been a difficult struggle and the one that has forced us to use everything we have at our disposal. After all, the front is the remnants of the old movement from the days of the West Russian War and has finally decided to reclaim its place as a formidable power in the country. Thankfully for us, who have dared to challenge it, we found an ally in the hostile environment and that is the anti-communist volunteer guard. Today. <clears throat> In one of the many recruitment centers we have set up to help in mobilization, over 100 men appeared seemingly out of nowhere, requesting that they participate in the struggle against the socialists of the WFRRF. WRRF, yeah. When asked about the background, they made the situation much clearer. They are proud Russians from Onega, the warlord state famous for resisting the front against all odds with the Finnish support. It seemed that the general Kurpichnikov's regime had been successful in cultivating a patriarch sentiment. Of course, our government and the highly command have welcomed the arrival of anti-communist guard, and the special unit of Onegans have quickly organized and sent to the front. While it may not be much, it is still useful in this war. Hey, we'll, we'll accept anyone who wants to join right now. We'll gladly accept anyone. Go, 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 go. You know what? They attacked. Smash the hell out of them right now. Kill them off. Go, 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 go. If they want to take that, so be it. It makes it easier for us to encircle them then. If we could race, because they are still fighting Velaga. If we could race down to the Ark, or race over to Ark Angelisk, that would be great. Come on, take them out. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, good. They, ooh, they're weak. They are weak. Oh, actually, that they're coming through here, too. Oh, crap. That's not good. So be it. Hey, we killed off that division, though. Great. I need you to come here and just start racing. Cool. You're all people in military's district, huh? Alright, so, actually, let's finish with one more focus. And I'm going to redeploy you guys all along this line, because it seems like that's where everyone pretty much is. Cool. Hey, 32 million GDP. Crack the coalition. The coalition, as it stands, is a complete farce. Every day, its representatives and the National Assembly fight each other for words and with fists over the most trivial matters of policy. Notifications to the leaders of the rival parties and issuing declarations of revoking our participation in the coalition will be easy to send, and the likelihood of other parties accepting is very high. The official dissolution of the coalition means may mean a return to the days of constant deadlock, political infighting, and inter-party street battles, but at the very least, it will reflect the current reality on the Assembly floor. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. We're doing relatively okay, even though Samara and Bianca are trying to kill each other, too. If you liked the video, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you'd be so kind, and I will see you tomorrow when we will beat the West Russian Revolutionary Front, hopefully, and hopefully beat Vyatka and Samara. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.